Yo, we're making lens flares. Here's kind of an interesting challenge. So about 95% of the short film I just worked on is using this lens here. It's got some interesting quirks, one of those being the flares that it gives you. And so the challenge that presents is when you're trying to do a completely digital shot and you kind of want to pass it off as real, how can we digitally recreate these quirks? And like I mentioned, lens flares, let's do that. So here we are in Blender. This is the final composite. It's very simple, but let's just get rid of this stuff and I'll show you how to build it up from scratch. So this is our shot with no compositing. Let's see if we can start dropping some stuff in. I'm going to add in a color mix node and I'm going to switch that to add. And let's turn the factor down to zero for now. And let's just get kind of a little bit of a, a haziness in here so things aren't quite as sharp. I'm going to go filter and blur. And let's just drag our image right into this image. And we could probably set this to about 100 and then plug that back into our ad. And let's just take a look at what happens when we turn this up. You can see it just really increases the brightness and kind of haziness and glow of the scene saying, hey, yeah, there's a pretty bright light source going on over here. So we could probably leave that pretty low, a little bit subtle, but that's a nice starting effect for our flare. Let's go ahead and duplicate our add node with shift D and then let's duplicate our blur node as well. Just plugging this into the image here and let's make this a little bit more subtle. I'm just gonna set it to 10. And if we plug this in right now, we get pretty much the same effect, but what we want to do is get kind of the inverse of what's going on. A lot of the time, if there's like a bright spot up here, then it'll show the bright spot on the other opposite side of the frame. So I'm going to go distort. Let's go scale. And I'm going to set these both to negative one. That way our light part kind of flips around and that's pretty cool. If we take a look here, this is way, way too bright. We can actually turn this down quite a bit. And I just noticed a mistake I made in the movie today, and that was to add in a color ramp. And this is good for controlling the sharpness of what we want here, but it's also good for controlling the color. And I thought that the lens just had naturally blue flares because I was studying shots like this. But thankfully we have actual footage of an actual flare and the actual tunnel. It turns out if we study this footage here, that the flares seem to be just the color of the light source, but quite a bit dimmer. So that makes sense of the scenes that are shot up against the blue sky that have blue flares. So we could just completely get rid of this color ramp and that would be more realistic. But I actually kind of like the way the blue looks. It kind of is a good complementary color in this scene that otherwise would just look like a hellscape. So um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it in, even though it's not exactly accurate. We could turn down the saturation a bit though. And of course, in the final scene, this is a little bit too dramatic. This kind of flare would be for like a really bright blown out sky. So I'm going to hold down shift and just turn down the factor on the add shader until it is not super noticeable, but a little bit noticeable. The other thing I'm going to add here at the end of the chain is what I always like to do in completely digital shots. And that's a tiny bit of lens distortion. If we just turn up the dispersion a little bit, that might be too much, but it's pretty dark, so you can't really tell. It just kind of adds in some chromatic aberration, which is what trashy old lenses have sometimes. So therefore, more realism. <laughs> cool. If you found this useful and you'd like to keep up to date on future tutorials, there's a link in the description that says get the smoke asset pack for free. And this asset pack is just a little gift from me to you. These elements are super handy. You can actually see them in the shot here coming from the flare. And as well as getting that library of seamless looping smoke elements, you'll also get emails whenever I post a tutorial so you can keep up to date. I hope you have an excellent day.